So good afternoon to everyone. Glad to see the attendance. It's uh, not the best time to start, but <laughs> that's fine. Um, I'm Philippe Clermont. I'm a board member of, and representing here the French chapter of Mars Society. The French chapter was founded just after the American uh, Mars Society. And our founder, Richard Heidmann, was one also of the early founders at the founding convention of Mars Society. So uh, he's number 50, I think, as a, as a member of Mars Society in the US. So a lot of links are it, uh, have been established in the past. So um, in a few words, it's not a subject, but we are approximately 200 uh, active members. Um, we do general communications in the press, in, for, in schools, in municipalities. Uh, on TV channels about Mars challenges. Uh, we do projects for students, and yesterday there was a project presented by a student of Ecole Polytechnique in France about the design of a spacesuit. I don't know if you, you were here. Um, we, do, we publish books, uh, and we do research papers. And I will talk about a summary of two research papers in this talk. So first, one uh, early result on this slide of the one of the research paper is the organization of a Mars colony of 1,000 person for a period of 20 years. So as you see, as you may have noticed, it's not exactly, it, it's an engineer design. It's modular, it's, it's designed upon functionality. It's not an architect design as we saw this morning with virtual reality, okay? <laughs> But it's better than a, a barrel to, to, to live a few days or a few months. So uh, I will present here our suit about how our communication, a Mars society, French part in, the, in that case, communication should evolve. There was a big change last year when Elon Musk presented the ITS project and the plans, very ambitious. Um, and it's a very different change. It's, it's, a, it's a big change because previously the idea was to, to for the human to, to put a feet, put, put, to put a foot on the Mars surface. Now the target is a permanent presence and settlement. So it's completely different. Sustainability, economic, legal, all these, all these things are, are, are coming up. So we talked about uh, how we should evolve. We performed two technical and economic survey. Uh, we give the summaries to get more concrete insight about what it could be. And we, number three, we had the general communication uh, initiative. In fact, Richard Hanman is a fan of science fiction and he wrote a novel, which is a thriller, and we, I will summarize it, unfortunately, in French at that time. <laughs> looking for solutions. <laughs> um, and finally, more technically, uh, we, I will present some ideas, um, food for soup, I would say, to organize uh, an upcoming seminar, a series of, co of conferences on a one-year period to try to brainstorm about all aspects of this field. So the, coming back to the changing context. Uh, <coughs> So Mars exploration became by robotics, scientific research, institutional funding. Now uh, Elon Musk change of this uh, we, uh, with a big communication initiative. It's becoming uh, much more uh, private and entrepreneurial. Um, we've seen here some companies in related to deep space exploration, um, deep, uh, deep, deep space ecology from startup to company which have already raised venture capital. We, there was a presentation yesterday. So there is a real trend beyond big announcement. There are many smaller initiatives which start to be funded for uh, private uh, initiative and return on investment at a mid to long term. So for sure, uh, SpaceX announced it uh, from the beginning. When you go to SpaceX website, you see that the, the goal is allowing Mars colonization and making human uh, multi-planetary species. 
this is um, this is not so much a fanciful goal. Uh, SpaceX has demonstrated a lot of success, uh, and failures, and success, but now uh, it, it starts to be uh, credible. Yeah, we can see on of it. There has been some proof of reusability, uh, several tests. So now um, it's a, we can say it's a commercial success. It demonstrated the technology of reusability. It has presented a first design for, in, uh, for an interplanar interplanetary transport system. It has shown uh, beginning of development on some major ITS critical parts and uh, with some uh, efforts to, for short term uh, initiative, Martian initiative, like about Dragon 2, or whatever it will be, it, it changed a bit, but maybe one year, two years, three years after, it, it is not a major change uh, uh, for that goal. So all this uh, and communication about this um, revealed the build a big, big uh, interest for the public. That's uh, at least our feeling in France, but I may, may think uh, it's more, much larger. So we, uh, first part, we produced two research papers one on the habitat, the other one on the economics. Um, so first, uh, a colony, a permanent settlement. Uh, the question was, um, put, bring some ideas on table. Uh, for what? Uh, define a purpose. And it should be a Mars-specific purpose and without permanent exchanges of, uh, with Earth, with local productions with local people being paid uh, on Mars. Then the second question we tried to answer was uh, what types and what scales of beans, how much money, how much size, technical solutions, they are in big directions, are well identified, but dimensioning is currently poorly documented. And then how to ensure upfront investment and long-term economic viability. I will summarize uh, these. So our idea was to take a scenario, including business case. And we, we thought that as um, any economic model on the long term, sustainable on the long term, will may, will must have money circulating uh, on the same place. You know, it's, we, you cannot imagine viable systems where people go to Mars for tourism or in anywhere, but e every money, every payment is done on Earth. So that's uh, uh, for which, uh, th the reason for which we define uh, several types of residents. So those paying residents, they are scientists sent by their agencies and they are um, wealthy tourism wealthy tourists wishing to spend a few months on Mars or why not being retired <laughs> on Mars. Um, so, and there are also another part, paid residents. So people with high wages, uh, very open to competence uh, and uh, working on Mars and providing local services to the, paid, uh, the paying residents. And as external uh, input-output uh, streams, there are, of course, involved earthbound parties and commercial service providers like transport providers. So we try to, uh, uh, my intent is not to present in full this, uh, this project, this, uh, docu this document, but it can be downloaded on the web. So um, I summarized it. Um, the economic balance, which is, with some hypothesis, a fare for an 18-month stay of six to eight million dollars, transfer cost trip one million dollar per person, and two million dollars per ton uh, uh, salaries. So high salaries, of course, uh, and tourism market hypothesis: 60, 6,000 people on a 
20 years model. Uh, so we came to an investment of uh, 50 billion dollars uh, and we had a scenario where this is uh, fun uh, f funded by space agencies, industry, operating company and a specific foundation. And we estimated the operating cap company capital to 12 billion dollars. Okay, this is the basic hypothesis. Um, I'm switching to the second paper, which is uh, Habitat. So the, the paper reviews the various possible habitat. Uh, inflatables, brick masonry produced locally, 3D printing, and glass production, local production. And uh, we detailed the glass system. The challenge of habitat on Mars is uh, some type of comfort and attraction for, uh, for local residents. If you live on, uh, all the time in caves uh, because uh, you wish to avoid all the time radiation, it's not very, not very attractive. So we, we, we went to another design with glass, with some protected parts, but uh, with possibility to, to be protected when you wish. So it, w what it means is that people can easily see the sunrise, see sunset, see attractive, uh, see, the, see the landscape, but when they are doing uh, most of the day work, uh, they are protected. So this is not an architect design, as I mentioned. This is a module of the habitat of the first slide. So there are greenhouses. Um, this is modular, so this can be put uh, one, uh, one uh, to, to the other. Um, <coughs> the, on the roof, you have ice, which protects from radiations. And you have a, a, a panel with a removable, which can be moved to expose more or less to uh, the, the sun and the landscape. And all these are connected uh, by interconnection corridor, providing a modular design, a scalable design. This is a place for a common, uh, common meeting, uh, for pleasure uh, exchange, social exchange. Uh, so the design is, as, as you may see, you can see the sky in so at the center. You can climb, see the landscape, but you can also be perfectly protected when you wish to do work. Uh, second, uh, second action we took, uh, so the publication of this, uh, this novel. It's a novel for a general, general public. So it's not too much technical, but it's based on real assumptions of the research papers. So it's based on um, uh, Cap to Mars uh, principles, <coughs> a bit inspired by Elon Musk design also. <coughs> and uh <coughs> excuse me <coughs> uh, and it's designed as a thriller so it's um, in the year two, 2140 um <coughs> and the, the colony uh, mysterious movement called the reformist movement was born on mars which is not very very known on earth um, are they dangerous or not? They are claiming the renewal of civilization on Mars. Okay, so this is a thriller. Uh, it's inspired also from hypothesis about Victoria, for instance, the girl, uh, which is a friend of the, of the hero, uh, Olivier Trambeck, the journalist. She's born on Mars. So there are some hypotheses about uh, how someone born on Mars will come or not to Earth, for, for uh, Earth, how else? So the, the question with this book, it, is, uh, it can be purchased on Amazon. So the only problem is that currently is that in French. So if anyone is the assistant, uh, is connected to uh, an American publisher who can help to translate and to provide it to a larger audience in English language, 
I will be glad to talk about this. The third part of our action, a seminar. Um, so this is in project, a project being built for typically a one-year period. Uh, the status is, we, our view is uh, the status is uh, all this is accessible. We have a huge amount of scientific data gathered at that time by robotic exploration, mapping, geology, chemistry, climate, where to install a, col a colony in one place or not the other, and so on. Uh, another ma major point, thanks to ISS uh, experiments, we had a lot of knowledge uh, available about medical issues, which is not a minor point. Uh, we know that living for long term in, in space without gravity, it alters bones, it, al it alters blood. Uh, there are many consequences and medical treatment. And of course, credible companies are elaborating scenarios. Second uh, status, the money. So our model <coughs> says approximately uh, $50 billion investment. But some basic macroeconomic figures here, um, coming out of uh, uh, statistical institute uh, in, in this field. For instance, the global sovereign funds total wealth at that time is estimated by some professionals to uh, $7.5 trillion. And it is currently invested 50% in oil and gas industry. Well, in 20, 30 years, they may have some major shift to do to invest this money in uh, emerging places and ambitious enough to provide investment opportunities. Another, another figure, um, hedge funds total wealth at that time in, in 2015 is estimated by one institute by at uh, approximately $3 trillion. More risky people. <laughs> then um, our, our view about status is that it's not, uh, it's not sufficient to have a spacecraft. We need also transport infrastructure. So the reality is that uh, current, uh, currently the communication between Earth and Mars is done uh, through the, the communication with rovers at that time, is done through the shared uh, NASA's dispa deep space network. And um, people say there is a few minutes per day slot available for Mars mission communications because there are a lot of uh, deep space missions uh, undergoing. So if you wish to send people, you need a reliable and a communication, uh, communication system available. And um, emerging question, why to go, which financial return and which incentive for investment and legal framework. When uh, you talk private investment, you must talk about legal framework. Um, here's a summary um, of the, what we see as the ITS project of SpaceX. Um, this is not, uh, this is really um, structuring choices to, to our view. So choice of full reusability of launcher and spacecraft. The choice of methane oxygen propellant so as to allow the good compromise between performance and possibility of uh, local production on Mars. Um, one choice is to reduce the three planks instead of the six months for rovers on the <laughs> automatic vessels, uh, reduce it to three months in order to uh, redu re reduce risks for, for crew and uh, including the radiation exposure. Um, major choice also, uh, space, uh, the spacecraft lands on and takes off from Mars. There is no specific landing module, no orbiter, no only one, uh, one, uh, one spacecraft. And he showed advances for two core technologies. So one, the engine, two, the composite fuel reservoir, which was, which was uh, there were video at, uh, at IAC uh, 2016. So um, as such, it's really a breakthrough because it provided a fully coherent mission design 
from an industrial viewpoint uh, with detailed dimensioning guidelines and with a view for permanent transport system uh, mid-term to colonize uh, to for permanent settlement on, the, on, 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 the, on Mars. But, you know, uh, as I mentioned, uh, beyond core choices, propulsion and mission design. Well, I would say no spacecraft, no engine, no, <laughs> no, no mission at all, but it's not enough in our view. Um, and for example, ITS did not provide details about some major, what I would call peripheral technology, but which are mandat mandatories if you wish to ensure crew safety and incident uh, re reaction in case of problems during trip. So I mentioned the telecom, the telecommunication network. Um, I, we could mention other topics like navigation, positioning, maybe star positioning, uh, star systems positioning, and local control in case of incident. Um, we need uh, embedded IT autonomy, so there is an IT part, there must be an IT part uh, within it, uh, and probably um, maybe mo much more complex than robotics because there are people uh, safety involved. Uh, and the IT autonomy, some level of IT autonomy is it will certainly be mandatory uh, because uh, of the Earth's communication lat latency, 12 minutes, 20 minutes, it's in case of big incident, it's too long. You cannot communicate, you must have a, lev a level of autonomy to take local decisions. Then if, in case of incidents, you need to get back control to human crew, uh, it's a big system, Co it will be a complex system, so you need uh, some user experience, uh, user interfaces uh, to, 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 to make it usable to people uh, which are going out an automatic uh, transport system for their survival. Of course, life support systems, it's uh, very much, a very mu lot of unknown. And finally, radiation protection spacecraft design, uh, especially in case of solar bursts, so, so as, um, which is a major problem and uh, a random problem. So we think there is a need for research and development in this field, which is peripheral to the spacecraft but which needs uh, which is mandatory for uh, safety of crew so our seminar objectives will be a bit large uh, identify and brainstorm about all aspects of mars colonization it's more we, we don't want to we don't want to uh, reinvent all the wheel and uh, gather all the data uh, which has already been gathered we just want to launch uh, some dynamics of uh, people um, working uh, in a common direction. Uh, so why go, why go on Mars? This was a question. Well, it's probably in the humanity DNA to explore new territories when they are accessible. And uh, there are some studies from uh, genetics of population which says that American native Indians came from Asia through Bering Strait um, a few thousand years uh, ago, so a long time. There were the Renaissance great explorations, and they they were made possible also by technical uh, improvement, like uh, like the sextant, the space uh, um, star positioning. There is also the question of uh, species survival. Already uh, five near extinctions of life in the <coughs> story of the Earth. And also um, maybe a new phase of economic expansion, a huge investment cycle starting. The question is, uh, are there candidates for to leave for settlement? Well, there was uh, this initiative called Mars One, which uh, attracted candidates on the web. They said initially uh, they had 200,000 candidates, but at the end, it seems, they said 4,000 full applicants. Uh, but it's, it's a big number. It's a big number, whatever. And then, <coughs> say, uh, an extract of what Elon Musk said at IAC 2016, he said that um, the final target would be for people wishing to relocate on Mars, the, uh, its cost would be around the price of a typical apartment, 
in a um, uh, median house in US. So he said $200,000. So it, it reminds of the immigration from Europe to US in the 19th century when uh, people sold their asset, their house, their farm in Europe and were setting up in, uh, in, uh, in US. Uh, quite the same spirit. Now we have also, uh, we, sh we think we should also go further to history benchmarks. Um, it, it would be interesting to know what is the cost of uh, space uh, agencies at that time in relation with GDP, with global GDP, um, gross domestic products, and uh, in relation to what, what, what it was when there was his investment in uh, the railways, or the great explorations uh, during Renaissance. Probably the history was more aggressive. Second point, uh, so uh, v v very quickly, um, our objective, so elaborate R&D food for soup for peripheral technologies, such example uh, I mentioned. Um, a topic building on Mars and city organization, a topic of health and psychology issues, a topic on legal issues, and a topic on economic models. Um, our methodology, we intend uh, both to provide internal experts of the French uh, chapter, uh, to talk with external experts, and then track, uh, put the tracks, put minutes, be rigorous into uh, the returns of those meetings and brainstorms. So first, uh, we intend to organize such meetings uh, with an, an expert internal and an, extern and an external, possibly from a non-space related relation. And a corporation, it's very interesting to see during uh, this convention that uh, Hewlett Packard, uh, Dassault System from France, th they are coming <laughs> to, to Mars. Uh, so um, construction, maybe construction company we could uh, attract to this uh, as external expert. Uh, second, uh, we intend to this to be open to general public. Anyone interested can come, even if he's not an, an expert. Um, we'll provide detailed minutes of meeting and will provide a trend for future works and future meetings and courage once the dynamics is launched. So the obje objective is to disseminate Mars colonization concept um, and attract young people to scientific results also, scientific studies. Uh, so as a summary, no, so two research papers published, a general public novel and in progress settling uh, of a seminar. So here are our coordinates and the links to download the two papers if you are interested. And I'm waiting any question. <laughs> Thank you. Yes? Yes. Uh, this one doesn't require as many people, and they're willing to pay a lot of money. I think that makes a lot more sense. There's a third model that says most of the tourists off the Earth are going to be in low Earth orbit. So what's the opportunity for Mars in that case? It is, in fact, to provide infrastructure at half the cost from Mars to low Earth orbit, and it doesn't take it from Earth's surface. Okay. I am interested in any reference on such a paper, yes? Again, well done on the uh, doing the economics and also taking note of sovereign wealth funds because I work in international finance and trade and that was very thoughtful and nobody's done that before. Thank you. By the way, my son is a 
professor at a university in Montreal. He speaks French every day of his life. Good. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Time is finished? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, uh, I will be available for questions afterwards. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>